We are going through the 2019 November IT paper, for the PRAC exam for grade 12. And we've done question 1.1 and 1.2. This video is going to start from 1.3. So this is the second part of question one. So here we've got question 1.3. There's a global variable called lowest has been declared for us and it's been initialized to the value of 100. Thank you for that. Uh, we must write code to determine the lowest number when clicked on this button. I think it's going to be Q13. Okay, so we're going to generate and assign a random number in the range from 1 to 100, inclusive to the value to the local variable R number provided. So let's go step by step of what they want me to do. Let's go to the program. There's the button. And let's just scroll to the top. We've done all this code. Let's just double check. There is the lowest value. Okay. It's the, the, and they probably assigned it a value somewhere. Maybe when the code gets, uh, uh, when it gets reset, it sets to 100. And when the form gets activated, it gets set to 100. But we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to come up here. It's been provided. There's our number. And we want to set our number when they click on this variable, on this, sorry, this button. They want me to assign it a value or anything from the range 1 to 100. Um, so there are lots of ways of doing that. We could use the random range uh, function, random range. The only problem with random range is that if you use it, you need to include math at the top. So you see that it hasn't gone red. So I'm assuming maths. Oh, they've already put maths at the top there. That's fantastic. So you can say random range from 1 to 100 to get your values. Okay. Um, another way is to use the random function. Just use random. And you can say random 100. And the problem with random 100 is it will give you values from 0 to 99. And we want from 1 to 100. So I'm not going to go 101 because then it's going to go from 0 to 100. I don't want the 0. So I still want 0 to 100. But I just want that 0 to become a 1 and then 99 to become 100. So I'm just going to plus 1. Boom. So that's one way of also using the random function. That doesn't need math. That's already in Delphi or oh, in the default program. So that's great. Um, display the number that was generated in the rich edit. So whatever number is generated, was displayed in there. Okay, that's all. So rich edit q13.lines.add. We're going to add our number. But if you remember, our number is an integer, and lines.add needs a string. So we're going to convert, convert it from an int to a string. So that we can add it. That's great. That's easy. And then what else do we have to do? Okay. Replace the current lowest number stored in our lowest with the generate number if that number is lowest. Okay. So we need to change that lowest variable. So that's recording what the lowest value is. It's default to 100. So I'm assuming we will get a number lower than 100. Um, so let's go to the code. So we're going to say if this number that we've just ran me if it is a smaller number then that lowest variable at the top then we must reset this lowest variable to our new number that we've created it's basically storing whatever the lowest number is so if we get a number like so it's going to be 100 so if we get like 95 95 will be low so now lowest will become 95 that's my new lowest and then it generated, if we click on it again, it's going to generate a new random number. Let's say it gets the number 25. 25 is definitely lower than 95. So therefore, that will become my new lowest value and so on. But only if it's lower. If I generate like a 50 after that, 50 is not lower than 25. So it won't do that. So there we go. So we've done that. And then display the lowest number in the edit box. So that edit box's value, edit q13, the property is the text property. We must display whatever our lowest is. But that's an integer. So we just convert it from an integer to a string so I can fit into the text field. Okay, so that's what I think it is. So let's just double check everything that we've got everything. Um, there's a reset button, so they give us some examples. Obviously, because we're dealing with random numbers, our numbers won't be the same as this. So you can see, oh, it's 43. And you click it on a few times, you can see it goes up and down. And 3 was the lowest out of all those numbers. So that's what we should see, something like that. So let's go test it to see if ours does the same thing. Obviously, remember, our numbers will be different because it's randomly generated. So our numbers might be very different to what their numbers are. So here we go. Do -do 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 -do. Determine a random number. 93, yeah, that's the new lowest. 
And then, oop, that's definitely lowest. Ah, oh, 42 is not lower than 23, so that doesn't change, but it keeps adding it. That's fine. Ooh, 3 is the new lowest. 15, no. 17. I think it's going to be a while before we get below 3, but there we go. It seems to be working. Fantastic. Let's do the final question of question 1. So 1.4, the encrypted string by the user must be decrypted and displayed. So they tell me that these alpha build the replacement digit. So, so these are going to be... So A is a 0, B is a 1, okay? So let's go. That, that's an encrypted version of the string. The original string, we must create that, or I assume, okay? So basically you see the T is fine and the M is fine, but that 8 and that 4, that's the problem. So what we do is if you look at 8, you would come here to the 8 and go, hey, there's an R. I must go in there. And when you see 4, you go 4, A and E must go in there. So write code. We're going to get an input box to get the encrypted string. Replace each digit contained in the, with the alphabetical character that represents it. So we're going from the replacement digit to the alphabetical character. And display the encrypted string in a message box. So something like that. And that must be displayed. Okay. And they give us some examples to test. Okay. That's, let's see if we can do that. So we're going to go to question four. Just to make sure we got on the right that button over there, boom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that input. Uh, do they give me like a step by step guide? Do they tell me? No. They just say that. Okay. So there's get the input, calculate. So this is on, it's a, we're a bit on our own, which is great because we can we can do this. So I'm going to make a variable called the first string. What are we going to get the first string in? So let's get that. We're going to get uh, s input. And that's going to be of top string. And we're going to say S input is going to get it from an input box. And we're going to say string code, enter code, whatever they want. And then we must, I put a default actual value in here. So I don't have to type it every single time. So I'm going to type in what they wanted the first time. You can go look at this little input box that they want. Uh, enter an encrypted string. That's what they've got. And they've got nothing there. So if you want to make it exactly like that, that's probably a good idea because sometimes they're marked to make it like so. Enter the encrypted string. And then they put nothing over here. Boom, boom, boom. Is that what they want? Enter the encrypted string. There we go. Okay. Put a little colon there. So we've got our input box. Fantastic. Now, now we're going to do the whole shenanigans of like encrypting it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some strings over here. I'm going to create my, uh, so the two strings that we had, if you remember over here, we've got our alphabetical string and our replacement string. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to make an alpha string and I'm going to make an, a replacement string. Okay, now over here, I'm going to set my alpha string to whatever those those letters were. So it's A to J. So remember that A to J. So we're going to make it in the all capitals, I'm assuming. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, J. I think that's my alphabet. Do I know my alphabet well? I hope so. Alpha, alpha. Okay. Oh, forgot to put the N there. Just a long. Okay, that's my alpha string, and then my replacement string is going to be the equivalent values as those, but whatever their replacement is, and if you saw here, it was from 0 to 9. Okay, that's great, so I'm going to go, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so there's 10 characters there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there we go. So 0, so 1... Position one there and position one there are the same. You could have made these constants as well. So there, so if you wanted to. So there we go. I've got my two strings. So what I'm going to do now, there, there are two things to consider here. So when we've got T, 8, M, 4, exclamation, there are two things that are going to happen. Either the, le the, the character, we're taking each character individually. We're going to reconstruct the string. We're going to rebuild it. And if that letter is in the replacement here if it's there which it's not so if it's not there the t there's no t here then i must just put the t back then i'm going to go hey just put the t back but if i find a character that, hey there's eight there is an eight here 
So if I find the character in the replacement string, so there it is. I'm going to go to the equivalent position here and get that value and add it from the alpha string. So you see there's two scenarios. Either the, the character that we're looking at is not in the replacement string, then I just put it in as it is, or it is there, and then I go find the equivalent position over here to go put it in. Okay, does that make sense? So let's, we're going to go through a loop. We're going to have a for loop that goes from one to, we're going to go through each and every character in the input. So we're going to go to the length of length of S input. Okay. So we need a, some sort of R value, I'll type integer or our loop. And I'm going to construct a new string. I'm going to build a new string. So this is going to be my new string, S new, S new. So I'm going to default S new to nothing. There's nothing in S new. There's nothing there. So, but we're going to start here. We're going to go, okay, begin, end. Let's go begin, end. Because I don't know how many things we're going to do. End of for loop. So we're going to check each and every individual character of the S input. And you do that by saying S input square bracket R. That's how we check each and every value. Now I want to see if the position of this character. So R is going to become a 1. So we are looking at T. So remember S input 1 is a capital T. I want to find the position of the T in replacement. So position of S in replacement. I want to find it if it's there. So I want to check if the position, so if it's there, it'll be some sort of value from 1 to 10. So if it's not there, it'll be a 0. So if it equals to a 0, okay, if it equals to a 0, then we know that the T is not here. Then all I'm going to do is I'll say, hey, you know what, S new is going to be whatever S new is and just add on s input r so do you see it was a t so find the position of the t in there it was a zero so take that t and add it on fantastic but if it's not equal to zero so this is if th this is if we find like the eight the position eight is there so the position eight is at position nine there well, i know it sounds weird but it's there it's at position nine so the eight is now in replacement if we find it is there then we must go find whatever that position is whatever that position is in in this one so i'm going to find its position it's let's call it its index that's a nice way to use it in index so its index is technically this the position of it i could have actually done this at, at the top that would have been a bit better and then you can just use our index every single time okay so we find the position of S input in there, it'll find, wait, like the 8 is at position 9, so at position 9, so index will be a 9 for that 8. I'm now going to say S new is going to be whatever is in S new at the moment, plus whatever is in the alpha string at position 9. So take whatever's in the alpha string, alpha, I spell alpha, I spell almost along, at position R index okay so let's recap it again so if it's a t there's no t in replacement so it's just going to take the t and add it on to s new so s new is now a t then it's going to find the eight is there an eight there yes it's at position nine so it's not there so we're going to come here go find where is where is eight in the replacement position nine go take that ninth value of alpha which is an r and add that onto s new so now the eight is going to be replaced by an r then m it's not in not in replacement, so it's gonna just add the M on. Four. Ooh, position four is at position five in that string. So that's gonna fail. So it's gonna come here. Position five, go get the fifth character from the alpha. One, two, three, four. That one. Go add that one onto SNU. Okay. So that's what that loop's going to do. And when the loop is finally finished, we can say show message SNU. So whatever's left over, let's see if it works. Please it'll work. So let's go encrypted string. We want that one, yes, please. And yeah, that looks right. So let's test one of the other examples that they gave us. Um, they gave us a lot of them. Ooh, adventure time. Let's go do adventure time. I'm gonna copy that and paste it in here. Adventure time. Make it happen. 
adventure time. It works. Fantastic. And the last one, last little test. Adjacent. Let's test adjacent. Adjacent. There we go. So there it works. Okay. So the key to that is finding the position of the character that we're looking at in this string and getting its corresponding value in that string and then add it onto you. Remember with, with strings, when you're constructing strings with a for loop, you set it to nothing, to the null string or nothing there, and you keep adding values onto it. Just like you would add onto a sum, you say s new is equal to whatever's in s new plus the new characters. Okay, so there you go. Question one is done. Well done. For more videos in this walkthrough of this exam paper, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.